Welcome to this week's Central Arkansas Basketball Report. I'm your host Steve Owens and a little different week for the Bears and the Sugar Bears this week. Both the Bears and Sugar Bears went on the road and played Tuesday night at Oral Roberts before the Sugar Bears had the remainder of the week off and the UCA Bears came back here at the Fair Center and took on Southern Illinois Edwardsville in the annual Bracket Busters game on Saturday afternoon. We'll take a quick break. We'll come back with head coach Corliss Williamson of the UCA men and take a look back at both of his games this week. This is the Central Arkansas Basketball Report. Sponsored by Conway Chamber of Commerce, AT&T, All Clean Restoration Services, Crane Automotive, AT&T, The Real Yellow Pages, Sonic Drive-In, Log Cabin Democrat, and Zaxby's. Flooding happens. When it does, call All Clean Restoration, Arkansas' solution to disaster restoration. Flooding. Fire and smoke, tornado, and more. We are Arkansas's number one restoration company, able to reverse the damage of any disaster, large or small, and get your home or business back to the way it should be. Tell your insurance company you prefer All Clean Restoration. All Clean Restoration, proudly serving all of Arkansas. Real Yellow Pages, yp.com and yp.com on your mobile. More ways to search, more ways to find. Only from AT&T. Welcome back and joining me this week is head coach Corliss Williamson and coach, kind of a different type of week. You went ahead and had two games, but a different schedule. You played Tuesday night in a conference game at Oral Roberts and then had a little bit longer turnaround. You played in the annual Bracket Busters game here at home against Southern Illinois Edwardsville. Just kind of talk about this kind of disjointed week for your staff. Well, you know, uh, we, the, the practices were kind of off, you know, after we played um, last Saturday, you know, we had a game and then uh, we ended up giving our guys off on Sunday. We were going to practice, but uh, we gave them the day off, try to get their legs back. And uh, Monday we came in, had a, had a pretty good practice early in the morning uh, because we had to get out as a staff and go do some recruiting while the team traveled to Tulsa to play Oral Roberts. So uh, it, it was a little different week for us, but, um, you know, uh, I, I think we ended up doing well as far as uh, you know splitting, winning at home, winning on uh, losing on the road. But I uh, wish we would have had a little better effort uh, Tuesday night against Oral Roberts. You talk about that trip to Oral Roberts. You were able to piggyback a recruiting trip because that is in the footprint of, of this program is Oklahoma. So you were able to get some recruiting in and go prepare for a conference game as well. You no, know, yes, we did. You know, having an opportunity to uh, to take advantage of the week, um, you have an opportunity to go recruit while you're traveling to Oklahoma. You know, that was very big for us. Um, we also have some recruits that we've been watching uh, throughout the year who had a chance to come watch our game. So uh, it, it was a very good week for us. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't have a good showing there, but you know it also uh, gives the recruits some encouragement, knowing that they can come in and help try to uh, try to improve our, our our team next year. As we go to the highlights, you're on the road at Oral Roberts, one of the best teams in the league, playing them on their home floor on Senior Day. So you know coming out, they're going to be fired up because everybody on Senior Day they play at a different level. Oh yes, they do. You know. Uh, uh, we really didn't know that going into the game until uh, right before tip-off somebody mentioned it to us. So, uh, you know, we kind of ran into a buzz. So, you know, I thought our guys had practiced well that week. We had a great shoot around. But, um, of course, you know, on, on senior night, guys are really going to come out to play and, and, and do well in their last game. And Oral Roberts uh, did a great job of, of finishing their season strong at home. So I know as we go to the highlights and look at our highlights, it, it's tough to defend them. They're so deep and, and they were balanced all the way around the floor. It's tough to get stops, isn't it? It is. It's very tough to get stops. Uh, you know, they shot 49% uh, for the game. Uh, I, I thought we tried to defend well, but they run their sets so good. Uh, they set solid screens. They're very patient. They make sure they get the great shots as well. Uh, and the thing about it, too, is that they, they turned us over 18 times and uh, were able to convert 26 points from that. And they really killed us on the offensive glass. I mean, they had 24 offensive rebounds. So you can't let a team do that to you on their home court. So I know that was one of the big differences in the game. They got off to such a quick start. And then when they did miss, they seemingly were able to get the rebound and get second chance opportunities. Oh, yes, they did. I mean, they, they out-rebounded us 56 to 38. Uh, so not only did they crash the offensive boards, but when we missed our shots, they made sure we didn't get uh, too many second chances with, at that. So, uh, but you know, I, I thought our guys tried to compete. You know, we got down 
But uh, I thought we tried to fight back there in the second half. I thought Jordan Harks played well for us. He ended up with 12 points and six rebounds. He was one of the guys that really got on the offensive glass for us. He had four offensive rebounds for us. And, uh, you know, I just thought he brought some effort and energy uh, that we were lacking from uh, the rest of our team at that time. So it seemed like Jordan's come off the bench and filled a role now for your team. Yes, you know, uh, he's accepted that role. He knew uh, coming to the season, uh, Anthony was going to be out and we needed him to start early in the year. And uh, he understands that we're a better team when we have someone like him able to come off the bench and bring us energy and effort to change the flow of the game. So uh, I'm, I'm very happy and pleased with Jordan's uh, acceptance of that role as well as the way he's flourished uh, coming off the bench this year. I know this is the first time we played a Oral Roberts in conference play, and Coach Sutton said that he thought that may have been his team's most complete performance of the year. And I know that's just difficult. When you get on the road and face a team, they're, they're good anyway, but – when they're firing at all cylinders, it almost makes it where you have to play a perfect game on the road, doesn't it? It does. You know, you have to play a perfect game. It can be one of those games where uh, you're turning the basketball over like we did 18 times or uh, missing shots. You know, uh, we shot poor from the three-point line, 28.6%. So uh, when, when the home team, um, like Oral Roberts, who has the weapons that they have, are playing and hitting on all cylinders, it's definitely going to be a long night for you if you're not able to execute. As you see at the end, you know, your team fought. I, I think effort-wise, you're fairly pleased with how your team fought throughout this game as we've seen some of the past performances on the road the last couple of weeks. The way they came out, they got punched early, but at least they didn't give in. They kept trying to fight to the end. I know that's something that you built upon going into Saturday's matchup. Yes, you know, like I told them at halftime, we were down uh, 50 to 27. I said, what, what we're doing now is we're playing for Saturday. Uh, we knew it was going to be a difficult game to try to come back and, and, and win. So we want to try to finish that game with some pride and some dignity. And I want those guys to go out there and, and work hard. And I thought we did a better job in the second half. I think they only outscored us by six points in the second half. So you can see the difference between how we started the game off, uh, you know, fighting against their, uh, their emotion as far as having senior night and making shots. I just thought we came back in that second half and really gave the effort that we needed to uh, build momentum going into Saturday's game. So after falling on the road 94-65, you got a few extra days or at least an extra day of preparation to come home, taking on Southern Illinois Edwardsville non-conference action, an Ohio Valley Conference opponent, where so far your team has fared pretty well against the Ohio Valley Conference. Yes, we have. We've done pretty well against Ohio Valley Conference uh, this year. Uh, Actually, the, the previous uh, three years, we, we've played well against Ohio Valley Conference. So uh, we, we, we knew the style of play that that conference played, and, and we knew we could adjust to it and, and hopefully do well. Um, and we, we took that Wednesday off after losing to Oral Roberts to give our guys a break, let them clear their heads, and as well as the coaching staff. You know, sometimes you got to get away from the game, but I thought we came back Thursday and Friday and had some of our better practices of the year and were able to come out and, and really be ready for the game on Saturday. Talk about going out of conference this late in the season. Does it help, hurt, kind of give your team, although it's a, it's a, a game that's on the schedule, like a mental break as far as maybe not being as part of the grind as far as Southland Conference play? Uh, I, I think it helped us. You know, we just lost five games in a row. And, uh, you know, we're sitting here struggling, trying to figure out how to win, you know, how to in improve our standings uh, as far as the conference race. So uh, having a chance to play someone outside of conference and, and to try to build some momentum uh, definitely helped us out. Uh, having a chance to represent the Southland Conference, uh, you know, playing against the OVC, I mean, that was also a, another incentive for us to go out and try to find a way to win. As we get to the game, obviously good to be home. You talked about a couple of good practices leading into the game, but for whatever reason, it seemed like the team came out a little bit flat. SIU came in ready to play, and they hit you early. Yes, they did. SIU definitely came out early and, and played extremely well. You know, they jumped on us from the beginning. Uh, they shot 54% from the, uh, from the field as well as 40% from the three-point line, and, and I just didn't think we did a great job of locating their shooters early in the game. Um, we just didn't have... You know, that, that push. I mean, we got down early. We kept making a run to get back into it. We'd tie it, but uh, we turned the ball over or, or, get, or give up an open shot and just couldn't close that gap. And they, they were able to take a big lead in the uh, first half. I say your team shot the ball well, 46% in the first half. You were able to get inside the paint. It just, they were able to get more shots and opportunities on the other end. Oh, yeah. I mean, they, they, they were able to get just about any shot they wanted. It just it looked like it, they, it was effortless when they were able to get their shots uh, as far as three-point shots or even uh, points in the paint. I just thought they did an excellent job of, uh, of moving the basketball. And they also turned us over in the first half. Uh, we turned the basketball over. Uh, quite a bit in the first half, which is uh, 
not good on your home court, especially when you're playing against a team that doesn't press you in full court. So you hit some shots inside. You were able to get in the paint, as we see right here. That, that seemed to be where you had your most success early, to at least try to keep the game within a working margin. Oh, yeah. One of the things we talked about was really trying to attack the paint. Uh, you see Ryan Williams there with a good drive. Robert Crawford had one before that. Uh, we just wanted to attack the paint and get the basketball inside because we felt like we had an opportunity to take advantage of it. Jordan Hawks with a good move there. Robert Crawford with another drive and a cleanup by, uh, who was that, LaQuentin Miles. We had 46 points in the paint to their uh, 28, and that definitely gave us an opportunity to get back in the game in the second half. We mentioned Jordan Harks in the opening, too. Your bench outscored their bench 11, too. I knew they were key because you got several key contributions in that second half comeback. Oh, yes, we did. We had several key contributions. You know, we were a little shorthanded. We had a few guys who were out uh, due to suspension, uh, violation of team rules. So our bench was shortened tonight, uh, that night, and we had definitely had some guys who come in, came in and played some major minutes for us. I thought Jordan Harks played well. Uh, I thought Ryan Williams and, and Linnell Brown played well in Spurs and Deshaun McClure, his defense really sparked us and carried us through the end of the game. And I think it's obvious in these highlights, too, your athleticism got to, to him in the second half, didn't it? It did. Our athleticism got to him. I, I, I thought our uh, conditioning was better. Some of those shots they were making early in the game uh, in the second half, they, they were short and they weren't able to make them. And, and the paint just opened up for us. You know, that's a great block by LaQuentin Miles there. I thought he really played well. He pushed the ball in transition. And then to convert on the other end of the court to give us a, to push our lead up definitely was a big play. So you were able to hit free throws at the end to, to hold on to the win, snap a five-game losing streak. I know that felt good, 80 to 78 win. Got to 10 wins on the season. Now you got something positive to look forward to going ahead back into conference play. But that feeling of finally breaking the losing streak, how, how good did it feel Saturday? It felt great. You know, uh, especially uh, the fact that. that We've lost five in a row. You know, guys have kind of uh, forgotten what it's like to win a basketball game. You know, uh, anytime you get down, you're worried about their emotion, whether we can fight back or they have that, oh, here we go again attitude. But our guys grind that game out from, from the beginning to the end. Even though we got down, we fought and we fought and we fought and found a way to win. So uh, to finally have an opportunity to win another basketball game going into next week, which is going to be a very important week for us in conference play, it was very big for us, uh, and I was very excited and happy for our young men to find a way to win Saturday. And you mentioned the conference pride in the opening. I know Stephen F. Austin had a big win on the road, but I think your team may have been the only one that won in the Southland Conference on Saturday. So, no, that's got to feel good as well to, to represent the conference with a win. It does. You know, anytime you can represent your conference, uh, uh, whether it's in a postseason tournament or if it's during the regular season, you're playing someone outside of your conference, it's, it's good to get a win because, you know, the Southland is a great conference. It's very strong. Uh, we've got some great coaching, uh, some great players, and, um, you know, it's good to go out and represent and show the, show the uh, rest of the nation how, how well our conference can play. And now you got that momentum from your win, and you hit the road for two games, Thursday night at Lamar, Saturday at McNeese State. A big game coming up on Thursday night for your team as you try to earn a berth into the conference tournament, and you can do that and punch your ticket with a win on Sat on Thursday night at Lamar. So I know it's good to get some momentum rolling into that game. Yes, it, it would have been pretty tough to go in there uh, losing six in a row and, and trying to find a way to get some momentum and, and win that basketball game because uh, to me it's going to be our, our most important game of the season. You know, it's an opportunity for us to uh, to to make history in UCA as far as making the postseason play in conference uh, in the conference tournament. Uh, you know, we, we were able to get 10 wins this year, double digit wins. It's the first time since I've been here. So uh, we, we've accomplished some things this year, but getting that win on Saturday is definitely going to help us going into Lamar because, uh, like you said, mathematically, if we win that game, we have a berth in the conference tournament. So we got to go take care of business. And I know another thing that you, you beat them easily here at home, but as you've looked over the scouting tapes and, and their scores, they are getting much better as they come along to the end of the year. They are. They are getting better. You know, Coach, uh, Coach Knight does a great job of, of, of getting his guys prepared. He's young this year. He lost a lot of scenes from last year. So you know they were going to get better from the beginning of the season to the end. And uh, the, the key for us is to not go in there and try to take them for granted because uh, they, they, they put their pants on the same way we do. So uh, we have to go out there and be ready to compete and, and try to find a way to win that game. Well, you play Thursday night at Lamar, then Saturday at McNeese on their senior day. Yeah, you know, we, we've had one senior day <laughs> that we've dealt with already. So uh, if we can try to find a way to win that game on Thursday, I, I, I'm really excited about our chances on Saturday. Even though it's senior night, 
Uh, but with us having a, some momentum going and winning two, and possibly winning two in a row going into McNeese, it gives us a better an opportunity to win that game. Well, it's good to get that win Saturday at home. Congratulations and good luck this week. All right. Thank you, Steve. That's Coach Corliss Williamson joining us as his Bears take on uh, Lamar and McNeese State this week on the road. Good luck to them. We'll be back right after this with head coach Sandra Rushing of the UCA Sugar Bears. Zaxby's, indescribably good. Since footlongs are the limousines of hot dogs, yes. we're celebrating Sonic's four new footlongs limo style. Okay, that's cool. I understand that they're really awesome and worth celebrating, but I wish we were in a limo. We're just sitting in the back of my car with a limo driver in the front. Oh, he's not a limo driver. Well, who is he? I don't know. I thought you knew him. No, I don't know him. Cool. Mystery. Get any of the new Footlong Quarter Pound Hot Dogs with Tots for just $3.99. And try the new Sweetheart Shake. This is at Usonic. Welcome back, and joining me this week is Sugar Bear head coach Sandra Rushing. And as we talked to Coach Williamson about, a little bit different week where you played on a Tuesday. Every team has to do it because of the travel partner situation, but you played Thursday and Saturday the previous week. Played Tuesday. Talk about your preparation with that kind of that short turnaround. Well, Steve, I thought we really needed the week. You know, we were beat up. Uh, you know, Ray had a, a shoulder injury, and you know, it just gives you a chance to step away. And we went back in practice and uh, took care of the basics, the fundamentals. And you know, I thought practice has been good. Uh, you know, I had to miss a practice or two, but uh, being on the road, and then I sent my staff out on the road. So it's it's been a it's been a good week, busy week. Well, you played the game Tuesday at Oral Roberts, the first time we've seen them all year. It happened to be their senior day. Just kind of talk about the matchup with the Golden Eagles going into it. Well, I thought I was really pleased with our effort, our fight. Uh, you know, we turned the ball over 18 times, and, uh, you know, they converted on that several times. But I, overall, I'm very pleased. I saw a, a unit out there uh, fighting together and really competing, and, and, and that was some good basketball. We just came up short, you know, and uh, – Told them after the game, I was very proud of them, the way they fought. You know, one or two things down the stretch, uh, we can, you know, we need to be a little bit tougher mentally and, and not make those crucial mistakes. But I saw, like I said, I thought our defense was, was, was decent. I thought our ball movement was decent. Uh, we still need to do a better job of blocking out. Even though we out-rebounded them, you know, the second and third shots right underneath the basket can hurt you. As we get to the highlights, going into Oral Roberts, they came in leading the league coming in. They have a, a literal star player in Kevy Looper. Oh. On their senior day, you'd think the cards were stacked against you. On top of that, they were on average beating teams by 30 points a game at home. So it seemed like the whole world was against us. But your team got, got off to such a good start there. We could not guard her. The, I mean, she was an amazing, amazing uh, player. And... Uh, you know, she's just really quick to the basket and, and pull up and, and shoot it. But you're right, they were beating people 30 and 40, 50 points. And I was really pleased with how we went in with our focus and, and was able to handle their zone. Their zone is very, very good, very solid, long. Uh, they extend it out. And the thing that we've had difficult doing is putting it on the floor and penetrating. I thought Ray did a great job with that. I think uh, Kelsey did a great job at, at the point. And then our, we got some play from our bench. So overall, you know, like I said, I was very pleased on the way we handled their zone. Getting to the game, seemed like we've gotten off to slow starts on the road. But in this game, we got off to a decent start. I thought our intensity when we came out uh, was, was really good. Um, like I said, I thought we fought it, uh, played extremely hard. Like I said, look at the ball movement there uh, against their zone, and we knocked it, the shot down. I, I think that was key early. We were hitting shots against them and keeping, and we actually had them off balance a little bit. Right, and then you know when they went to man, we were easy, uh, closer to the end of the ball game. We were you know able to score on them because I feel like our post play is very very solid. Nice jumper there by by Ray. So their zone, you know, their zone defense gives a lot of teams problems. They, they extend it out. You can kind of see on the highlights how far Looper and Bigum come out to guard. And Buff can handle that really well, I thought, especially the, the way they try to control the tempo. We got a little sluggish midway through the first half. They went on a run, 
and that's usually when they knock people out. But we continue to hit shots, as you see from outside. I really think that probably helps keep us in the ball game. Yeah, and Steve, that's what I was saying. I, you know, I saw the, this group out there fighting, uh, competing, and, and you know, we didn't put our heads down, and, and we just kept we kept plugging. And that's what you want to see this time of year with, with your team. You know, the, having the confidence, and like I said. We're going in, and you know the players are thinking that you know Oral Roberts are beating people 40 and 50, and I, I really thought we met the challenge. We uh, just came up short. It's like early in the second half, they hit us with a couple baskets early. You had to call a timeout, and it's usually at that point where they start pouring it on. But your team not only picked themselves off the mat, they punched back and was able to get a lead, and for sure Oral Roberts got knocked off balance. Yeah, and like I said, you know we just moved the ball well, and we. Uh, we were we were in sync. I just hate it. I mean, you know, when you have 18 turnovers and they score, I think it was 24 points off of turnovers. You know, and, and I always say there's good turnovers and there's bad turnovers. I mean, to me, there are, you know turnovers are bad, but when they take it down and convert two points or three points, that that just breaks you back sometimes. Great shot there by BG. So you mentioned live ball turnovers in the pregame show. You wanted to limit those, especially with their two guards out on the top. Absolutely, of the zone. and you know it ended up like I said, it turned into 24 points, and you take that away, and you know we're 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 in the ball game. Nice move by Courtney Dover there. So her and Megan were able to get off in the second half the way the game was called a little bit. Your team had balanced scoring throughout. All five starters were in double figures or almost double figures. I think BG was the only one that had under double. She had nine because she had three three-pointers. Talk about how difficult it is, even with that zone that Oral Roberts plays, defending against it. That's why, you know, the ball movement and, and screening the zone – it's huge, so we can get those open shots. And, uh, you know, I think you've got to seal a zone, but, you know, you, you got to penetrate. And that's something we worked on going in there. you got to stay low because they reach a lot. Uh, I think once we break that one trap, that's what happened a lot of times, the opportunity because they collapse in, and it's opening up the outside shot. We've seen now after the 20-point winning at Sam Houston State here at Saturday, on Saturday at home, and then the effort on the road at Oral Roberts despite the loss, 76-69, this team – I don't know if you can say they're starting to turn a corner, but you're starting to see a team that you're trying to mold and play your style of basketball, and you're starting to see them respond. And I know that's got to be encouraging. I know it's a loss, a disappointing loss, but you're starting to see the signs of the team you, you're wanting to coach now, and, and it's at a good time as well. Well, the, their focus seems to be there, and, and like you said, the energy. And you have to have energy. I mean, you know, going into the ball game, and, and you have to have confidence. And I'm seeing, though, it's not only confidence like in what we're trying to do, confidence in each other on the floor. And that's huge because there's five people playing together out there. And you, you've got to believe in your teammates. And I'm seeing a little bit more uh, of that. And I thought, you know, when you talked about BG, the other night, yes, she had nine, but I thought she had a tremendous game, you know. And, and um, I think that's when she was hit for maybe a, a, a technical, yeah. 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 And, I, you, know, I, I, you know, I can't really say a whole lot, but I just disagree with the, that technical. And we do not allow technicals, you know, players do not get technicals. But I asked, you know, what she said, and that, there's no way that that young lady deserved a te technical, in my opinion. Now, of course, I am coaching her, and I'm going to support her, but... Uh, you know, she didn't. She did not deserve that. We talked about now. You've been able to kind of have a whole week basically off. Your team's playing better. You're able to get back to the baskets. Quality practice time. They're they're playing better, playing harder. Are you also concerned a little bit? But now that they've had a little bit too much time off, you know, they're hungry to play games. Does that kind of well? Everything seems to be going good, but now you're worried about two tough places you got to go on the road and maybe taking a step back. Well, you know, it, it's going to be tough. I mean, you know, we uh, it was a tough game here when we played Lamar. I uh, watched the film, and we were very fortunate to get out of, out of that one because we made some mistakes down the stretch, but we played hard. You know the situation with McNeese, and, uh, you know, that was just an ugly game. And I think this time around, you know, yes, we have to play them at home. It's senior night, but we also know what they did to us on our home floor, you know, and that's about pride. That's about putting on that uniform and let's go, and, let's go get the respect that, that these players deserve. So that's a rivalry game. So, you know, they got us here, tip your hat, but our girls are going to come out with a much different focus and intensity. At least you really hope so. Oh, I hope so, and I, and I think they will. You know, it's, uh, we know what McNeese has. We know how they play there. Uh, you know, and again, it's about pride, and we're we're playing for something. You know, we're we're playing for something, and we want to get a good seed going into the tournament, and uh, you know, play good basketball. I say, as we tape this right now, we are in the conference tournament. Almost all eight teams are in. Still, plenty of seating. Basically, one through eight still up for grabs as far as seating goes. 
So it is important to kind of keep continue to play good basketball, get some of these last couple week wins, and, and try to improve your seating because you still have a chance to get maybe even a first round bye. Absolutely. And see, Steve, here's the thing. We play in three great teams at the very end of the season. And you know what? That, that's good because we need to rise to the occasion. Let's go play our best basketball and continue that on into the tournament. We talked about going on the road this week to Lamar and McNeese State. Let's talk about another aspect of the road, and that's the recruiting game. I know you, you've had some extra time. The men had a game, but since the Sugar Bears did not, you and your staff have had extra time to go out hit the road, continue to look for future Sugar Bears, kind of update us on, on the best you can. Obviously, you have limitations on what you can say. We have been just about all over the country, if I want to say. I mean, seriously, uh, driving, and uh, it's been a lot of hours driving through snow, And but you know, you have to do what you have to do to find players. My staff was out um, driving nine or 10 hours. I was out nine or 10 hours, and um, it's going well. But, but you know, you got to seal the deal at the end of the year when you bring people on campus. And I really believe if we can get people on campus, we've got great facilities. Conway's a great place and we can sell them, but we've got to get them to campus and I believe that we can sell them. So we've talked about it now looking ahead. Lamar, they're at toward the top of the league. I think they're maybe just a half game behind Oral Roberts. They play tough at home. We were able to win there last year for the first time since we've been in the Southland Conference. They're going to be ready for revenge. And then McNeese on Saturday, tough week coming up, but you want to carry that momentum over and hopefully you can accomplish that. I agree. And, you know, we go into practice today. We're going to talk about strategy and what we need to do and work on the little things. Like I said, it's no two or three hour practices. Let's get in, let's get be intense, be competitive, and then watch film and let's go play ball. Well, Coach, good luck this Thank week. You. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. That's Coach Sandra Rushing joining us here on the Central Arkansas Basketball Report. We'll return next week. I'm your host, Steve Owens, and so long for now. Whether it's mom's smartphone, dad's tablet, Lauren's smartphone, or Kevin's smartphone, AT&T makes it affordable for the whole family to share data on all their devices. With AT&T Mobile Share, you can add a tablet for $10 a month. AT&T. Rethink possible. Hey, Jay Myers here for Crane Buick GMC in Conway, and we are big supporters of the UCA Bears. What we want to know is, what's your favorite bear call? Bear call number one. Bear call number two. Bear call number three. Go Bears! Go Bears! Go Bears! Vote for your favorite bear call at Crane Buick GMC's Facebook page, plus bring in your ticket stub for an extra $500 off your next purchase. Only at the GM Giant Crane Buick GMC. Go Bears! Go Bears! Go Bears! Go Bears!